Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Diva and we're going to make something nice and aggressive with a lot of distortion and some automation. So a part of this video is going to be the Diva sound design portion and then we're going to do some post-processing afterwards and do some cool stuff in Patcher. So it'll be a little bit longer, but stick with me. I believe you're going to learn something through this whole thing. So right click in it preset and let's get started here. So for this one, I'm going to go MS-20 all around because that's a good sound that we can get through. And for the envelopes, the analogs are probably going to be fine. So we have something like this. The first oscillator, let's bring this up to a saw wave. The second one is also saw wave, so that's fine. Get a good amount of peak going. And for the kind of, let's bring it down kind of maybe around here-ish or so, maybe 60-ish, and then give it almost all the way for the envelope amount. Bring our sustain down. Maybe a slower decay, and then kind of bring our sustain up just a little bit. So I have something kind of like this here. And then for the LFO 2, what we're going to do is basically bring this rate down pretty low. And then for gate, let's go to sync. And then let's kind of just uh, give a little bit of modulation on the cutoff. Okay, so it's already kind of nice and aggressive. Let's add a little bit of chorus here and let's go maybe to the classic and bring the mix down quite substantially. Some good amount of depth and drop the rate down just a bit. And from here, we can just turn on our ARP. And a little bit of delays can go a long way. So let's turn our effect two on, let's go to delays. And for the left side, let's just go to four. So it's gonna be four on the left and the right here. And bring our low pass down and our high pass up a little bit. Maybe it's a good amount of wow, could be cool. Okay, so that's pretty much all we have to do in Diva for this patch right here. Now what we can do is start doing some post-processing stuff to really kind of spice it out because a lot of sound design isn't just inside the sense. There's a lot of cool stuff that we can do afterwards and add stuff with automation and you'll see here in just a second. So one of my favorite distortions is the one from Arturia, this Dist Op Amp 21. So let's go to ahead and go to a new preset and enable this here on our inserts. And what we can do to kind of make this kind of cool is start increasing the drive. A little bit of presence. For some of these buttons here, it's kind of interesting to toggle them on and off. So this one here boosts the mid-range. We can toggle this off for now. This one here cleans up amp overdrive. Turn that one off. And I really like this one here. This boosts the treble. Something kind of like that. And what's interesting, and this is kind of just a sound technique as well, but if we have an EQ before we start distorting it like this here, then we can basically choose how much of those frequencies we want to push into the distortion to distort that a little bit more, or kind of carve stuff out if we don't want stuff as much distorted. So that's just something to kind of think about. So, so I kind of want to get something sizzly like that. So with those delays, a lot of that feedback might be a little bit too much. So let's bring this kind of down here. Just a little bit, something like that. You know, maybe let's hold off on this delay. Maybe we might do something different with that. Okay, so it's already starting to sound pretty cool here. And we could run it through a compressor if we'd like to. Let's kind of check this out here. We might not even have to. Yeah, let's, so let's bypass the compressor now. It's not really too dynamic. So this is the cool part that I wanted to show you. So let's say, for example, let's bring in Patcher here. So did I spell the wrong path? I said path. Here we go. Patcher. Let's bring in Patcher here. Now, what we kind of want to do is kind of control a different EQ bands and move things around with a knob or something cool like that. So Patcher is really good for kind of doing stuff like this. And maybe this isn't exactly something that you want to do, but take a look at these concepts and kind of think what you could do kind of doing these kind of things. So basically we have our insert chain or our inserts right here. And then we go into Patcher at the very end. 
And this is gonna be where our signal starts coming out of. And then we do some processing and it sends out to FL Studio. Okay, cool. So what we wanna do, let's bring in EQ. So parametric EQ2. So let's bring in this bad boy here. And it's basically connecting this audio here with this yellow goldish line here. So if we hold down Alt and open up our plugin to keep this window open, what we kinda wanna do for playing something. Maybe what we wanna do something kinda of like that, like move this band with the volume and maybe also move this band with the frequency. So for this situation, I'm going to be using the sixth band. So kinda of let's keep that in our mind. So what we need to do here in Patcher is tell this EQ to kind of open up this, this, uh, this port for us to use. So if you can right click this here and then go to the inputs and then parameters, then we have a whole list of stuff that we, can ha we have available to us. So like we said, we have the sixth band. So we want the level. So let's open up the level. We want the level. And then what we also want is the frequency, right? So the band six frequency. Okay, so now we have these two controls that we want to control. So over here in our surface, we hit a wrench and then we want to add some, you can right click, you can click the plus, whatever you want to do. But if you right click here and then let's say we want to add a certain knob, we can go for, let's say heavy metal. This one might be kind of cool. And let's bring this up something like this here. And then maybe right click, rename this as John's macro or put your name macro. Okay. So we have this here and we can come out of edit. So we basically have a knob that does absolutely nothing for now. Okay, so back in our surface here or in our map, we have this green or this green, this red button right here. And if we look on the top left, it says John's macro. So this is gonna be controlling what we wanna control. So we click this here and then we would say we want to go to the EQ, right? So the first one here, if we hover our mouse over it is gonna be the level and the one below that is the frequency. So let's go to the frequency first and let's attach this here and let's take a look and see if this works. So we can see that on our EQ, as we move this, this knob here, our EQ is mapped to that right there. Okay. Sweet, we have that already in check there. Now let's say we go back here and we wanna do the same thing, but control the volume. Now we go here and we boost the volume and okay, this is kind of cool how it goes up here, but it kind of just goes down and maybe we don't want that kind of functionality. We kind of wanna just keep it above zero. So we just really wanna boost things. So this is kind of what we have to do here. And this is kind of the concept where I'm like, okay, this is kind of how you start thinking about these things. So what we want to do here is add a controller. So this XYZ is a very good one for this kind of situation. So we drop this down here and basically we have a graph, three graphs of X, Y, and Z that we can control our curves and all that cool stuff. So for this situation, let's say we want to use X. So we need to open these parameters just like we did with the EQ. So right click here, go to our inputs, parameters, and then we want the X value. And you can always right click to keep the menu open if you want to do that. Just a little FYI there. And then here are the outputs, right? Because we want to send this information out and then we click the X. So now we have access to our X. So access to our X, wow, that's a weird, weird thing to say. Anyway, so band six level, let's bring this out of the EQ, bring it into the controller, out of the controller, back into this EQ. So now this knob's getting processed by this X value inside this box. So if we open this up here by holding Alt and we kind of keep our windows open here so we can kind of see everything at once. If we go to this output mapping and we have this X that's kind of going like this, right? So if we go back to our service and we move our knob, we can kind of see that it's almost this like linear curve. And if we move our mouse, it kind of has a slowing effect and that's very annoying. So in this situation, we want to take the speed all the way down. So when we move things, it actually functions properly. Okay. So we're kind of going down here, right? So if you look here on this graph, we have a negative value. So what we want to do is have our magnet on and bring this above zero. So that way we can go all the way to the left and we're not gonna go underneath. We can go all the way to the top and we're gonna go to the max value here. So this is kind of a section where you would want to dial in how much of the maximum value and the minimum value that you want to use. So already in context, it would sound something like this. Okay, cool. So let's say now that we want to kind of control this resonance, right? We want to have this maybe on the same knob. So we have one knob that kind of just does a cool effect. So hopefully you're kind of figuring this out by now. We have to make this available in our EQ. So right click this here and go to the inputs, parameters. And what do we want? We want band six, the resonance or the width here it's called. So input six. And then we are right over here, band, band six, width or resonance. So now we have this available to us. So what we could do is we could just drag this here and bring it onto the resonance and kind of see how this works here. So at the top, we have a huge band in here at the bottom. It's very narrow, but we don't have any volume. So this is kind of a weird functionality, right? 
So this is another case where we want to use this controller and we don't need more of these right now because we have X, Y, and Z. We're already using X, so let's go ahead and check out Y. So it puts parameters and then right click on Y and let's go down here to the outputs, controllers, and then left click on Y. So now we have our Y available to us. So down here was the width. So let's take this out of here, go into the Y, output the Y, and then input the Y to the EQ here. So now we're back in this here, and then we can go to Y and remember bring this speed down because it's very annoying. Okay, so now we have this graph to control the resonance, right? So up here at the top, we can kind of just move this around how much we want it, right? So if we want maybe the maximum value to be really narrow, we can have it like this, and then we can just move this around and it'll kind of stay there. Or we can have it to expand a bigger resonance or a bigger width as we get down lower frequency. So we can maybe do something like this. So as we go lower, it kind of opens up a little bit more. And as we go higher, it kind of narrows out. So let's see how that sounds. Okay, so that's definitely pretty cool. So in this concept, we can think of a lot of cool things, right? So we have the EQ basically getting processed and that's kind of the only thing, thing that we're processing right now. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can kind of think about. Maybe you can get Fruity Blood Overdrive and as more as you move that knob to the right, the more distortion you're gonna get or the more compression you could apply. So this is kind of a concept that I kind of wanna drill in your head because Patcher is really cool. There's a lot of cool things that we can do with this. And think of all the plugins that you have right now that you can bring inside here, open up these parameters and then map controls to it. Maybe make an entire new interface, maybe like the distortion of Blood Overdrive, but you like the delays of the delay three, so you can throw that into your thing. And kind just mix and match the favorite things that you like of FL Studio or really whatever that you want to add here. So in this case, maybe you want to automate that. So there's something that we do have to think about. So we have this here. We like this process here and we're like, okay, cool. We have our knob done and we went to right click and it's like, okay, where is the automation thing, right? So First thing before we even get to that is you should probably save this patch. Maybe you like this concept here. So if you spent the time to build this and you have all your programming done and you don't want to do, get, do it again, just save it as a preset, right? Click this button up here and then go to save as preset or save preset as. And then anytime you want to put this effect on another plugin or another effect, you can just recall this and it's going to be mapped and ready to go. So now we want to automate this. So we right click this here. We don't have an automation thing. We have to activate it. And once it's finally activated, then we can right click and then we can go create automation clip. And then now we have this clip here for our knob that we, uh, that we made. So in this situation, we can maybe bring something like here, here, do some weird modulation stuff like that or automation, depending on your terminology. And then, you know, this is kind of just a fast one. I'm kind of curious how this is going to sound a little weird and then maybe bring it down like that. So we can even just add a note in here. Let's say we want to, yeah, this is fine. Do four bars of that or something like that. So we go here and we just take a listen to it. And then we can see that also in our EQ, we open up patcher, go to our service, hold down alt, click it out and we can check it out how it's working. And maybe you can do that something rhythmically. So let's do this a little bit faster. Here's something like this. And then another knob like that up here. And then, yeah, just kind of spend your time in here and do some cool tricks. And yeah, that's kind of just the concept I kind of wanted to bring to you guys there. And that was just a simple doing a band of one EQ with the level, the resonance, and the uh, the bandwidth. So, yeah, think of what you can make. Uh, if you make something cool, please please let me know. I love seeing different patch recreations because it's kind of like the sky's the limit. So, the Diva patch will always be available for download. But your homework, if you want to do this, is try to do that thing with the uh, with Patcher because it's a lot of fun and you're gonna get inspired the more you kind of get used to it. So, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you learned something and stuck through to the end of this one because I know it's kind of long. And we'll see you in the next video.